Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to work through the North Carolina Math 1 released exam questions that are calculator inactive. So on the EOC, they're definitely going to be checking your knowledge of quadratics and they're going to um, want you to remember the standard form of a quadratic, which is AX squared plus BX plus C. What they want you to know about this is that if A is positive, it opens upward, and if it's negative, it opens downward, and, if, and the C value is your y-intercept. Okay, those are two really helpful things. Another thing that could help you with questions is knowing that factored form gives you the x-intercept. So it's whatever would make that x-intercept be zero. So you could do 4 minus x equals zero, and x plus 2 equals zero, and then solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 2, and I know that x equals negative 2. Now that one's the easier one to find. I'm going to eliminate all answer choices that don't have negative 2 as um, an x-intercept. So that would not be b. It would also, so that only eliminates one. The other one's a little bit weirder because we typically, typically don't write our factors like that. But if I subtract 4, I have negative x is equal to negative 4. So then that would mean x is equal to positive 4. I would divide by negative 1. So those would be my two x-intercepts. Um, and the only answer choice with a negative 2 and a 4 is a. Now, typically with my students, I have them also distribute here. So if I were just to distribute this, um, which I think would be valuable for someone to work it out both ways. That would be 4x, that would be 8. This would be negative x squared and negative 2x. And then if I rewrite it in standard form, I would have negative x squared, 4x minus 2x is 2x plus 8. From here I can see because of this, it opens down. And because of this, it crosses the y-axis at 8. And so that's the other reason that A is the answer. So you can answer this using either of those methods. All right, number two, we have, a, um, we have an inequality and we need to graph it. So we have to get y by itself because we can't see what it's supposed to be graphed like looking at that one. Now, you could answer this by picking some random points and plugging them in and checking that they're in the shaded area. But that would t probably take more work than just putting it in um, the correct form. So I'm going to subtract 2x. That gives me negative y is less than negative 2x plus 4. And then I'm going to divide by negative 1. The most common student error is that when you divide by a negative, it changes the direction of your sign. It goes from less than to greater than. This becomes positive 2x minus 4. So my y-intercept is negative 4, not positive 4. So it can't be a... It can't be B, and it's going to be between C and D because you can see that your lines here are going further down. It's going to cross further down that y-axis. So I'm going to look at my symbol. My symbol is greater than. Because it's greater than, I need to shade above. The only answer choice shaded above is D. All right, number three. You don't actually have um, – actually, so this is not the one I was thinking of. You would just distribute here. So this would be 3x squared. And then you would have negative 3x, 6x, and negative 6. Combine your two middle terms. We'll give you a 3x in the middle. And then you can find your answer, which is right here. All right, moving on. Number 4. We have a line that's in the standard form of a line, slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. Passes through the point 1, 6, and is parallel to this one. What you have to know about this is that parallel means same slope. So I know that my slope is going to be 4 because parallel lines always have the same slope and the slope of that line is 4. And then I'm going to use this x, y point to find the y intercept. So I'm going to do y equals mx plus b. I'm going to plug in 6 for y because that's y. I'm going to plug in 4 for m because that's the slope. x is 1 plus b. 4 times 1 is 4. I'm going to subtract 4 to get b. That gives me 2, my equation. Oh, it just wants B. Voila, we're done. This is my answer. This would be one where you just type the answer into the box. All right, two functions are shown below. What is the largest integer value of x such that f of x is less than or equal to g of x? Now, this question is requiring you to know what the word integer means. An integer means... A positive or negative whole number. So what I have my students do for this question is to make a table. All right, so I'm just going to make a table. What's this table? 5x plus 2. And I'm going to put 
some positive integers. Now, if I see that those don't work, I could do some negatives, but I'm just going to start with positive. So I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't know. I'll start there. I can always add more numbers if I need to. If I plug in 0, anything to the 0 power is 1, so that would just be 1 half. If I plug in 1, that would be 1 half times 2, which is 1. If I plug in 2, that would be half times 4, which is 2. Now, the pattern here, I'm multiplying by 2 because that is my... my um base number there. I'm raising 2 to the exponent, so I'm constantly multiplying by 2. So I can fill in my the rest of my table pretty easily once I see that pattern that I'm just multiplying by 2. All right, the, the linear function over here is 5x plus 2. I plug in 0, I get 2. I plug in 1, I get 7. This pattern is plus 5 because it's linear. It goes up by the slope. So I can just keep adding 5. All right, the question says when... Or what is the largest integer value such that f of x is less than g of x? So you want the one on the left to be smaller or equal to the one on the right. Um, and currently, it is still always smaller. So I'm just going to go up one more. All right, that would be times 2. That's 32. Here, if I add 5 again, that's also 32. Here, they are equal to each other, so the largest value where they're less than or equal to is actually where they're equal to, and that would be 6. All right, a company models its net income in thousands of dollars with the function blah, 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 where X is the number of units of its product sold. How many units of its product does the company need to sell in order for the net income to equal zero? So it tells us that the equation models the net income, and it says when is it zero, so we're just going to set it equal to zero. Now, for this question, they're kind of requiring you to do a lot of math here. You're going to need to factor it um, to see if we can set it equal to zero. And unfortunately, you got to know that 144 can be divided by 9. You can take 9 out when you're factoring. All right, so like 9 times 6 is 54. And then if you did 9 into 144 off to the side, you're kind of just guessing and checking, right? That goes in once. That's 9, that's 5. Bring down my 4. That goes in 6 times, so it's 16. So it's a, it's a hefty factoring question. All right, so now I'm going to try to factor the inside here. Um, I need something that multiplies to be negative 16 that adds to equal negative 6. So I'm like, all right, well, what's that? 2 times 8? And if I make the 8 negative that multiplies to be negative 16, it adds to be negative 6. This is x plus 2 and x minus 8. So my solutions are what make those be 0, which is negative 2 and 8. The only question that makes sense, or the only answer that makes sense here is 8 because you can't have negative 2 units of a product. So you would type 8 in the box. All right, number seven, Joanna has a total of 50 coins in her purse. The coins are either nickels or quarters. The total value of the coins is 710. So you got a situation here. You have the number of coins and you have the total value. All right, so we're going to have an equation for the number of coins and we're going to have an equation for the value of the coins. So you have to know that a nickel is 10 cents, or sorry, five cents, that's a dime. Oh boy. All right, quarters are 25 cents. And then you can deal with the amount of them. So I just have the amount of them adds up to 50. So nickels plus quarters equals 50 coins. So this equation has that. This one does not. This one does not. This one does not. So just from that alone, knowing that nickels plus quarters is 50 is the right answer. Then, um, but we also, the other equation comes from the amount. So just like if you, if you know how many nickels you have, you would multiply it by what they're worth. So like five cents times the number of nickels, 25 cents times the number of quarters is equal to your total amount of money. The answer is A. All right, number eight. The function models the height of a candle X seconds after it is lit. What is the meaning of the y-intercept? You have to know that the y-intercept is the B value. That's the 5. That is your starting height. The y-intercept is always the initial value. It is A. That is the initial height of the candle. Always a y-intercept is your starting point, your starting whatever. All right. The total cost in dollars of a membership in a fitness center is given by the function where M is the number of months a person is a member. 
in dollars, how much is the cost of a membership for one year? Well, M is the number of months. You're wanting a year. There's 12 months in a year. You just plug in 12, 20 times 12 plus 40. You could work that out. 20 times 12 is what, 240? Because you just do 2 times 12 and tack on a zero, plus 40 again, you end up with $280. All right, the water is being pumped into a 10-foot tall cylindrical tank at a constant rate. The depth of the water is increasing linearly. At 1.30, the water depth was 2.4. It's now 4 p.m., and the depth of the water is 3.9. What will the depth in feet of the water be at... 5 p.m. Okay, so we want to know what the rate is. And so we can figure out the rate. Um, we could do this by minute or we could do this by hour. I'm going to do it by hour. So I know that it went from, um, it was 3.9 at 4 o'clock. I'm going to subtract what it was at 1.30. And I'm going to do 4 p.m. minus 1.30 p.m. I'm just going to divide it by the amount of time that's passed. Well, 2.5 hours has passed. So for finding the rate based off hours, I'm going to divide it by 2.5. All right, so that's what? 1.5 on the top. There's There's been a 1.5 increase in water depth over 2.5 hours. Um, and then I'm going to reduce this. Um, I would divide both the top and the bottom by 0.5 that would be three over five. And so I know that it's going up by 0.6 feet per hour. Um, and so once you know that, you can say, you can add it on. So at 5 p.m., you would add on 0.6 and that would be 4.5 feet. There might be an easier way to do this. This is the way my brain works. This is one of those questions that I, I could see easily being missed. There's a lot of different ways to approach it. All right, number 11, Sally works at a store. X represents Sally's monthly paycheck and Y represents her savings. Sally will save at least 20 more than half of her paycheck. She can save at most 80 more than two-thirds of her paycheck. Her paycheck each month is at least 1200 but no more than 1850 So, I just like to use X and Y and plug them into the words. Her paycheck each month. Okay, so paycheck is X. At least. At least is greater than or equal to 1200 So she's got to have at least that amount of money, meaning she can have more, but she can't have less. No more than 1850 All right, that's her paycheck. I'm just going to use that. That sentence to me is the easiest sentence. I'm going to use that one to just eliminate some answer choices. So it can't be A. Could be B. Can't be C. It could be D. Okay, so we've got that part. Now we got to figure out the rest. Sally will save at least. So savings is her Y. Y at least greater than or equal to. Um, and then it says 20 more than half her paycheck. Half her paycheck plus 20. Half her paycheck is one half X plus 20. So we're looking at these two answer choices. Did I mess up my variables? She will save. Y represents her savings, at least. No, I didn't. Okay, half, uh, so B has that one. D does not, so it is B. The other one um, deals with her, the, she can save, so that's another why statement. At most would be um, less than or equal to. 80 more than two-thirds her paycheck, that's just two-thirds X plus 80. That's where the other one comes into play. All right, moving right along. Company uses the formula, blah, 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 to determine the total cost of purchase S, computers, and P, printers. Which formula can be used to determine the number of printers purchased given the total cost T and the number of computers purchased? A lot of words. All it's saying is rearrange the equation for P. So if you see something like this, and then you see all these equations, they just have a different variable, it's probably just testing your skills to see if you can rearrange the formula. So I have T is equal to, I don't know why my pin changed, 581S plus 150P. There we go. And I want to get P alone, so I'm going to take away 581S from both sides. 
So I have T minus 581 S is equal to 150 P. And then the way to get P by itself is to divide both sides by 150. The whole thing is being divided by 150, and so the answer is C. All right, number 13, what is the value of the positive zero? You have to know that this is a quadratic. You're setting it equal to zero, and you have to know how to factor it. Um, so this would be x plus 11 and x minus 11. This is the difference of squares. You have to have opposites. 121 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. 1's plus, 1's minus. So we get x equals negative 11 and x equals positive 11. It says, what is the value of the positive 0? The answer would be 11. All right, what is the value of x in the system of equations shown below? So we have um, a system. System means two equations or more. And we have one in standard form and one not kind of in slope intercept form. But we have a variable by itself. When you have a variable by itself, you're going to plug it in you're going to substitute. You're going to use substitution. So I know what y is. I can replace y with what y is. So I have 5x plus 4 times 1 minus x is equal to 1. Since they said, hey, y is 1 minus x, you can plug that in for y. You can substitute them in. Now you only have x in your equation. You're allowed to solve now because you only can have one variable. You have 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative x is negative 4x equals 1. Combine like terms, that gives you x plus 4 equals 1. Subtract 4, you get x equals negative 3. All right, that's the value of x. Now, if I was taking the EOC, I would take the time to plug this back in and make sure it actually works. All right, what's the value of the smaller zero of the function? Again, we're factoring so much factoring on the calculator in active section. 2 is the GCF. Set it equal to 0 and take out your 2. I'm just dividing everything by 2. Then I want to know, well, what multiplies to be negative 12 and what adds to equal negative 4? This would be 2 times 6 is 12. And if I make the 6 negative, that adds to be negative 4. So I have x plus 2 and x minus 6. The zeros are the opposite because negative 2 plus 2 would be 0 and 6 minus 6 would be 0. And it wants the value of the smaller one. The answer would be Negative 2, and that is the calculator inactive section in the release exam. Hope this helps.